Recently, I did a video about HIMARS and MLRS doctrine with large unit organization, tactics, and limitations. This video follows up on that by taking a deeper look at the detailed organization and equipment of U.S. Army rocket artillery batteries, from the launcher to the battalion, with some notes on the Marine Corps as well. If you want a deep dive on how HIMARS and MLRS are used in combat and how they fit into large organizations, check out the original video. But the spark notes is HIMARS and MLRS provide precision, long-range missile fire to units larger than brigade, normally a division or corps. Their munitions are accurate to within 8 meters generally, and can reach out to 84 or 300 kilometers depending on which munition is used. In the future, this could be pushed out to further than 500 kilometers with the PRISM missile. The main difference between the two platforms is HIMARS is based on a 5-ton truck and carries half the missiles on board, compared to MLRS, which is tracked. In most respects, the organization of HIMARS and MLRS batteries are identical, with some differences in ammo supply, which I'll address. Before I get into it, if you like these more niche detailed videos, which I know isn't the most popular thing in terms of views, consider supporting us on Patreon, linked in the description. At the base of it all is the launcher, which constitutes a firing section. It's manned by a section chief, ideally a staff sergeant, a gunner, and a driver. The section is responsible for technical fire control, or the process of translating different factors like ammunition characteristics, launcher and target locations, and weather conditions into solutions to aim and fire the launcher. Currently, most US Army MLRS platoons have four launchers, with two platoons per battery. However, there is a plan to transition to three launcher platoons with three platoons per battery as part of an expansion program. But as of time of recording, only one HIMARS battalion has actually made the transition. Launchers serve under a platoon HQ, which mans a platoon operations center in combat. At a minimum, the platoon HQ conducts reconnaissance of potential firing sites, of which there should be at least three per launcher, directs launcher positioning, and coordinates logistics, which includes scouting out reloading points. Additionally, the platoon can conduct tactical fire control for their launchers, which involves deciding whether and how a target should be attacked, and passing that decision on to the launchers as a firing order. Fire mission! Fire, fire mission! mission! Target number Delta Foxtrot 1030! Roger, fire target number Delta Fox 1030. In tracked MLRS units, the platoon HQ includes two Humvees and an armored command post vehicle which acts as the base for the platoon operations center. By contrast, in the wheeled HIMARS units, an M1152 Humvee with the advanced field artillery tactical data system is used in lieu. Personnel-wise, it has the platoon leader, platoon sergeant, reconnaissance sergeant, battery display operator, two fire direction specialists, and a Humvee driver who can double as an RTO. The reconnaissance sergeant aids the PL in selecting firing positions, hide areas, and reloading points for the launchers. Meanwhile, the platoon sergeant is responsible for monitoring the ammunition situation and organizing local defense of the launchers. As well, when operating a platoon operations center, the PL and platoon sergeant will normally split command, each taking a shift. Each firing platoon will also have a combat medic attached to provide life-saving care. At the battery level, firing platoons are logistically supported by the battery trains, which are led by the organic support platoon as the logistics operations center, and includes elements attached from the battalion's forward support company. The organic elements include the support platoon HQ, supply section, and two ammunition sections. The platoon HQ is a small element, just consisting of a platoon leader, platoon sergeant, driver, attached medic, and a Humvee. The supply section is also relatively small, consisting of just a 5-ton truck and a water trailer. They have a role in accounting for the property in the battery, providing small arms repairs with an armorer, and requisitioning supplies. The supply sergeant can also share leadership of the battery's logistics center with the platoon sergeant. But the meat of it are the ammunition resupply vehicles detailed for carrying launch pods. In MLRS units, each of the two ammo sections have four Hemet trucks and trailers, with a carrying capacity of 64 pods per battery. 
Meanwhile, HIMARS ammo sections have five HIMARS resupply vehicles and M1095 resupply trailers, with a carrying capacity of 40 pods per battery. In the Army, the resupply vehicle is based on the same M1084 5-ton truck as the HIMARS. Or, in the case of the Marine Corps, the medium tactical vehicle replacement Mark 37. Notably, the MLRS batteries use the Hemet, which has a payload capacity of 10 tons, versus the MTV, which is rated for 5 tons. This was a point that was probably misrepresented in my original video, because I didn't differentiate between MLRS and HIMARS resupply vehicles. In addition to these organic elements, attachments from the Battalion Ford Support Company also make up the battery trains. The major habitual attachments include a battery support squad and a maintenance support team. The battery support squad includes eight more ammunition trucks and trailers, two medium trucks, and two fuel tankers and tank trailers. So it's basically a multifunctional supply section. The maintenance support team then is led by a motor sergeant and includes an M88A1 armored recovery vehicle, a Hemet wrecker for recovering wheeled vehicles, a contact maintenance truck, medium truck with repair supplies, and a Ford repair system mounted on a Hemet 10x10 PLS transporter. After the launcher operators themselves, the attached maintenance provides the second line maintenance to the battery. Tying it all together is a battery headquarters and battery operations center. The HQ commands the battery overall and consists of the captain commander, first sergeant, and a driver. The battery operations center meanwhile acts as a fire direction center for the battery and plans the movements and positioning. It consists of a Humvee, an armored CP and MLRS units, or the Humvee FTC and HIMARS units. The operations officer, ideally a first lieutenant, oversees the operations center and the fire direction center as a subset of the BOC. In addition to the officer, they have an operations sergeant, FDC section chief, two display operators, and four fire direction specialists. In order to ensure soldiers get adequate sleep during 24-hour operations, the operations officer and support platoon leader can take turns as duty officer for the BOC. A similar dynamic is seen at the battalion level between a captain operations officer and a battalion S2 intelligence officer. Army rocket artillery batteries on the old 2x8 structure have their headquarters and headquarters battery, attached Ford support company, and two firing batteries with eight launchers each. But battalions moving to the new structure will have three firing batteries with nine launchers each. The battalion overall comes under the command of lieutenant colonel, while the battalion executive officer usually leads the battalion trains. I won't go too in depth with the Marine Corps HIMARS battery, because the most up to date table of organization I have is a notional one from 2001, but batteries have two firing platoons, each with three launchers for six launchers per battery. At the battery level, there's a battery headquarters, operations section, communication section, service section, and an ammunition platoon. The Marine Corps' active duty HIMARS battalion has four of these batteries, while the reserve battalion under the 4th Marine Division currently has three batteries. I'd just like to thank our patrons who make more niche videos like this possible. Consider joining them at the link in the description. And if you enjoyed this, check out our full video on HIMARS and MLRS capabilities, tactics, and limitations. We'll see you over there.